Father, seeking a word, dear God, from you, Heavenly Father. And we know, Heavenly Father, dear God, that we're not going to be disappointed, Heavenly Father. Because if we come, dear God, with an expectation, dear God, we know, dear God, that you're going to show up, Heavenly Father, and show out, Heavenly Father. So we pray, dear God, that you'll set the atmosphere, dear God, here on today, dear God, in the name of Jesus, dear God. If anything be in here, dear God, that is not of you, dear God, we command it to go, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, dear God. And we pray, dear God, for the people, dear God. Heavenly Father, that their hearts and their minds, dear God, will be focused, dear God, on you, Heavenly Father. And if they're seeking, dear God, anything, dear God, we pray, dear God, that you'll have that for them here, dear God, on today, dear God, in the name of Jesus, dear God. Anoint, Heavenly Father, and bless, dear God, your man of God, as he comes forth with the word of God, dear God, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. Use him mightily, dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ, dear God, to bring forth your word, dear God, here on today, dear God. We love you, dear God. We praise you, and it's in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. Thank Let's you, give God Lord. some praise Hallelujah. as our praise and worship team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. I need your glory. I want. Your glory, oh Lord, less of me and more of you is what I need. Show me your glory, show me your power, oh Lord, less of me and more of you is what. I want your glory, I need your glory, oh Lord, less of me and more of you is what I need. Show me your glory, show me your glory, and show me your power, show me your power.
entrepreneurship be upon every meeting father we pray that signs and wonders follow blinded eyes open the lame walk the deaf hear and the dead rise back to life again we pray the miracles of debt cancellations healings deliverances and supernatural wonders to perform be made manifest we pray the spirit of excellence in every service May revelation knowledge come forth concerning economic leadership, wealth generation, strategic planning, and creativity in the business arena and in our everyday Christian lives. Father, we thank you that Pastors Dwight and Connie Butler are full of wisdom and understanding and that you will use them, Lord, to divinely impart truth and godly principles to faith assembly Christians and other living words. Father, we pray that you will flood Virginia with prosperous businesses, making jobs and income available for your people. May those places that were once desolate and ruined become like the Garden of Eden. We pray that Joseph's anointing for political, business, and economic leadership be upon your leaders. We pray that Joshua's anointing for pioneering new territories and real estate acquisitions are upon them. May Moses' anointing for trailblazing be upon them in full measure, giving them insight and strategies for ownership. Father, in the name of Jesus and according to your word, we long and pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that its inhabitants may be born again. We pray that you, Lord, will be a refuge and a stronghold to the children of Israel. Father, your word says multitudes, multitudes are in the valley of decision. And whoever calls upon your name shall be delivered and saved. Have mercy upon Israel and be gracious to them, O Lord. And consider that they fight for that land to be restored. We pray for peace in Jerusalem. May they prosper that love you, the holy city. Peace be within your walls and prosperity be within your palaces. We further declare, Lord, that Pastors Dwight and Connie Butler are protected and covered out of, by the blood of Jesus from all the schemes and plots of the enemy. We forbid any demonic activity against them, their children, their possessions, their travels, their transportation vehicles, their health, their meals, and their sleeping accommodations. We declare that no hurt, harm, danger, or accident shall come near them. Father, give your angels charge over them to keep defend and preserve them in all their ways. We release the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit upon every meeting. Father, we thank you for the spirit of excellence and favor upon this church. We declare that doors of opportunity, doors of success, and doors of abundant resources are open and that the plans, purposes, and gifts you have placed in the hearts of the people at Faith Assembly Christian Center, the living word will be filled. We expect new businesses to be birthed, Father, and for signs, wonders, and miracles to perform, confirm the word that is ministered. We declare that Faith Assembly Christian Center, the living word, is a complete success. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray, and your people come together and say in one voice together, amen, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, oh Lord, less of me and more of you is what I need. Show me your glory, show me your glory. Show me your power, oh Lord. Less of me and more of you is what I need. Show me your glory, Lord. Show me your glory and show me your power. Show me your power. Give me the love. 
Hallelujah. Come on, just put your hands together. Let's celebrate Jesus today. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for what God has done for you yet this far this week? Hallelujah. Come on, touch your neighbor and tell him, neighbor. Come on, tell him, say, neighbor. God has been blessing me this week. Hallelujah. Come on, has he been good to you? Come on, sing with us. Say, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Has he been good to you? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Has he been food on your table? Yeah, yeah. Has he been clothes on your back? Yeah, yeah. You got a roof over your head? Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you have joy? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Do you have peace? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. a shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of worship. He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all honor. Come on, give him the praise. I don't have to pump you up to give God a praise. You made it here tonight. You should be excited because you're in the house of God. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout of praise. God inhabits your praise. Come on, give him a place to worship. Come on, saturate the atmosphere. Let God move in this place. Hallelujah, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you glad to be here tonight? Yeah, yeah. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you love the Lord? Yeah, yeah. With all of your heart? Yeah, yeah. Shout to God, say, say yeah, say yeah, 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 say yeah, 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 say yeah, 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 say yeah, yeah, let the glory, glory of the Lord rise, let the glory, glory of the Lord rise, and let the praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do you got joy? Yeah, yeah. Do you got peace? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Am I right? Amen. Amen. See some people just making it in. We'd like to welcome all of our pastors that are here on today. Amen. Welcome our TV audience that are tuning in via satellite. I'd like to say, everybody turn around. Let's give a shout out to our pastors who I know they're watching on today. We love you. We miss you. We can't wait till you return. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right now, I'd like you to point your attention to the video monitor so you can see some of the wonderful things going on at Faith Assembly Christian Center, the Living Word.
it together for those that love the Lord. If you love the Lord, bring it on. I'm here to tell you, you going to make it. You get ready to come up. God get ready to bless you. And I don't care what the devil said. God said he was manifested for this very purpose, that the works of the devil might be destroyed. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all ready for the word? I'm definitely ready for the word. Tonight, um, we have Bishop Michael Farrell, all the way from Raleigh, North Carolina, Breakout Ministries. Amen. Like I said before, he really needs no introduction inside of this place. A powerful man of God. And I know God is going to use him mightily to bring forth a word that's going to bless the house on today. Right now, we got the choir coming forth to sing a couple selections. And right after them, the next voice you'll hear will be Bishop Michael Farrell. So as the man of God comes forth after the choir sits down, give him, give God a praise for the man of God, amen?
Hallelujah, I thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I thank him. Hallelujah, I glorify his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I glorify your name, Lord God. I honor you, O oh Lord. I worship you, O oh Lord. I honor you, O oh Lord. I worship your name, O oh Lord. You're magnificent, O oh Lord. I praise your name, O oh Lord. I worship in your name, O oh Lord. I honor in your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, I worship you, O oh Lord. I worship you, O oh Lord. I worship you in your presence, O oh Lord. I thank you for your awesome presence, O oh God. If I had 10,000 tongues, I could thank you enough. Oh Lord, I worship you. Hallelujah is the highest praise. I worship in your name, O oh Lord. I honor you, O oh Lord. You're the first and the last, beginning and the end. Oh, how I thank you, O oh Lord. 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 Oh, how Come on, give God some praise in this place. Come on, fill this atmosphere with worship. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's saturate this atmosphere. Come on, let's send praises up so God can inhabit our praise. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout out praise. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Let's go ahead and saturate the atmosphere. Come on, get loose in this place. Sing with us. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. When you praise. When you praise. When you praise. Hey. When you praise. When you praise. Come on. When you praise. Hey. When you worship. Just worship. When you worship. Hey. When you worship. Your worship, hey, when you shout, just shout, when you shout, hey, when you shout, just shout, when you shout, hey, said they gotta calm down, said they gotta calm down, said they gotta. give God another praise tonight. How many know it's got to come down? Everything that tries to rise up against you. God said there's a word that he will speak against that thing that tries to come up against you. In the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we love you and we thank you tonight for another opportunity to share with the body of Christ. To just to say what you have us to say. To challenge the people of God. To cause us to walk by faith and not by sight. I thank you for favor that's already here. 
I thank you, God, for turning things the way you've already turned them. And Father, tonight, as you begin to speak, we open our hearts and minds to you now. God, I thank you now for every healing, every restoration, every fulfillment of your word. Oh, God, I give you honor and praise tonight because we're confident in what you do. In the name of Jesus. And God, we keep giving you praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Somebody give God a lot of praise like you love him. Hallelujah. Prophesy to your neighbor and tell him the Lord's going to bless you real good tonight. Oh, glory to God. Ah, We bless him tonight for being back in the house of the Lord. Tell him again, God's going to bless you real good tonight. Amen, 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 amen. Since this is the year of divine turnaround, hallelujah. Somebody say divine turnaround. Things are turning for you now. Hallelujah. Whatever tried to stop you can't because you're done crossed over now. Ah, God, I thank you. And so tonight, if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to um, the word of the Lord on um, three passages of Scripture. But first of all, we want to thank the Lord for the angels of this house. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for Pastor and Co-Pastor Butler. We bless the Lord for them in their absence tonight. We're just, it's just an honor and a privilege to be able to come and just share with you, amen, what the Lord has laid on our hearts, amen, to um, continue to go higher in God. If you have your Bibles, we're going to Genesis first. Amen. We're going to read one verse out of there. Um, the first chapter, well, the second, well, the first chapter of Genesis in verse 31. And then we're going to stay in Genesis and go to the 50th chapter and read verse um, 20. And then we're going to go to Romans 8, 28. Hallelujah. We're going to go to Genesis first. We'll read that one, and then we'll move along. We thank God for all the pastors, men and women of God that are here tonight. Hallelujah. Every prophet, every prophetess, every evangelist, every young person, every laity, we, we bless the Lord for you tonight. Amen. Verse 31 says, and God saw that, saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, run over to the fifth chapter of Genesis. Hallelujah. And verse 20. Matter of fact, let's read verse 19 and 20. The Bible says, And, and Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good. That's my second good. To bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. And then finally in the... Um, Eighth chapter of Romans. Scripture where a lot of people are familiar with, but it's not familiar with them. And he says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God them who are the call according to his purpose. Father, we thank you for the reading of the word, faith coming by hearing and hearing the incredible word of God. We ask that you bring clarity and understanding tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I want you to look at your neighbor uh, and you notice, praise God, in each one of those scriptures there was one word that I want to magnify and that word was good. Good, good, good. Amen. But look at your neighbor and share this um, declaration with them and say, neighbor, he makes me look good. Praise the Lord. You can have your seat if you can. It's going to make a whole lot of sense before the service is over. 
It may sound a little arrogant and a little bodacious, but you'll find out that it's humbling. Because many times people don't understand what you walk in and what you operate in as a believer. And so um, to, to enhance or to help us, um, the word good, many times um, people, people's definition of good is um, a good life, a good job, um, money. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Um, according to set circumstances, at the ideal circumstances, we consider that's good. That's, that's what man um, perceives it to be good. Everything is going the way it's supposed to. Everything is ideal. But according to God, good, what Paul says, he says that in verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. God said there's an end that's coming here. And so when he talks about good, he's not talking about stuff. He's talking about becoming like him. And so when, when God looks down and says good, He's saying, you look like me now. Hallelujah. You're operating like me. Hallelujah. And, and so um, tonight it is my assignment to share with you how he makes you look good. I, I think about um, a corporation where you have people up in the office. You have people um, in the front. Then you have people that are in the warehouse. Normally, you don't see the people in the warehouse because they basically do the behind-the-scene work. The ones you normally see is the receptionist, and she tells you, um, how can I help you? She um, is pleasant. She talks about um, the, the benefits and the things of that company. But you never see the people in the warehouse. But the people in the warehouse make the reception look good. Because of their productivity and their continuity and their faithfulness to what they have been assigned to, regardless of how hot the warehouse is, regardless of all the unpleasant people around you trying to discourage you, trying to get you to quit, but you stay there and do the job because you're making somebody else look good. And, and so tonight, um, through the crises and the things that God has set up in your life, they're actually helping you look good. And so in the first scripture we read over in Genesis, the first chapter in verse 31, I want you to notice something. The scripture says, first of all, that God saw. All right? He saw everything that he had made. And then he says, and behold, it was very good. Now, it kind of challenged me because I, I read that again and again. I said, he saw, he made, then he said it was very good. My question is, what did he see so that he could make it? I would have said, I made it, I saw it, and then it was good. But God says, I saw what was about to be made. Then I just went on and decreed that it was good. He made something out of what he saw. And then he decreed that it would be good. He did it on the sixth day. The sixth day represents opposition. It represents attack. It, it represents flesh. And, and many times, God is not intimidated by your opposition. He's more encouraged by it because he works real good in the dark. And many times we're looking at our beginning, but God says you need to look at the end. But what happens, we get so discouraged by our beginning and our in-between that we don't see what the end going to be. And so he said, I saw that this particular test was going to be very good. He saw the crises that were getting ready to be built up in your life, that was getting ready to navigate you and to get you where you need to be for the glory of God. Notice, praise God, the scripture tells us in Genesis, 
um, concerning about the earth, that it was void, and it had not yet come into its fullness. But God was not intimidated not to, to speak over something that was not together yet. And many times we have the tendency not to speak uh, when we need to because it hasn't manifested yet. And so we start speaking after the fact that after I get the check, after I get healed, after everything starts materializing, but the just shall live by faith. For I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither into the heart of men the things that are prepared for them to love the Lord. And since God is a good steward over everything, he saw everything how it's supposed to be. He knew the, the type of people that were going to challenge you. He knew how long you were going to be in the test. He knew, praise God, how depression was going to try to overtake you. He knew, praise God, that certain things were going to try to overwhelm you. But he still went on and said, very good. You got to understand, good is a, a condensed form of God. Mm -hmm. to, to understand good in God's sense, it is the only word he could um, vernacular um, so that we could appreciate because any other word would have blew our mind. And so he uses, a, um, in our mindset, a simple word, good, but really it's God in the good. Mm -hmm. God in the good. He, he's in the good. And that's why God is good. You know what I'm saying? He, he, and so he begins to, to look at everything that you're about to go into, but many times we don't want to go into it because we can't see what we're going into. But as God has catapulted many of us into this early part of 2009, he says, I don't want you to worry yourself about my involvement because I am active in what I'm doing. Because many people have this question, why are things going the way they're going? But God has a sign on the neon sign that says, keep quiet, God at work. See, we want to do his job, but God says, let me do my job. And all I want you to do is comply to everything that's given to make you look good. Because, see, the trial that you're in right now is really going to bless you in the long run. But you look at it like it's over, but really it's a beginning for you. And so tonight, as we begin to look at what God is saying in these three types of good, because look at somebody say, good, good, good. Hallelujah. The first good deals with my place. You got to understand the, the place that I don't understand because God has always put me in places that I don't have to build. He's always put them in arenas that I don't understand, but he said, I saw it before you got there. And so the job you're on, you don't like it, but God said it's good. The relationship, sometimes you say it, it don't look good, but God said it's for my good. Don't feel good. Don't see no good, but God's giving me to get some glory out of it in the name of the Lord. And so there's a, there's a word um, that um, comes from the Greek word um, synergy, um, which means two elements that, are, that God will cause to become new but cannot produce by themselves. I say that again. God takes two elements that are fairly new that's getting ready to produce something, but they can't do it by themselves. That's why I said all things work together for the good. And so um, you ain't going to get the breakthrough by yourself. You're not going to get the job by yourself. You're not going to get the miracle. Um, revelation ain't going to come by yourself. So you're saying, God, use me for your glory. Have your way in my life. And so God says, really, what I'm getting ready to do is cause some trials and some settings to come your way to see if you're a man enough, a woman enough, to engage in some things that are literally God's going to cause to get up under your feet for the glory of God. And so God begins to look at my places that I'm getting ready to go into. And some of you are going into places, praise God, that are stretching you right now. And, and what you're looking at now is that God says you are nothing but a piece of marble. And what I'm getting ready to do is chip away some stuff that's on you because the, the sculptor already know in his mind what you're supposed to look like. And so he's not here to harm you, but to make sure you come into a beauty like you never come before. Look at somebody say, I'm nothing but a piece of marble. 
and I'm in the hands of God, and God is giving me that. He's chipping away attitudes. He's chipping away indifferences. He's chipping away stuff that don't resemble him because it ain't about God making you wise, wealthy, and healthy. It's making you look like him. It's, it's causing you to become like him. And until your test says you look like Christ, you ain't ready yet. Hallelujah. If you're still looking like you, God says some chipping is still going on. Look at somebody say, he's chipping away at me right now. Glory to God. And so he sees everything. He's already told the enemy how far to come on you. He's already told you that no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper. And so everything has already been thought out. Everything has been calculated. Your ministry, amen, God has it on a set time when you're about to blow up. Look at somebody and say, you're going to blow up after a while. But God said, I can't blow you up until I deflate you because I can't have a Holy Spirit. I can't have you walking around here thinking that it's you when it's all about me. And so what he's getting ready to do is keep transforming you because he's already predestined that you come out of this. It's already in the email that you're about to get blessed. Look at somebody say, you're about to get blessed. Now let me rephrase that you're already blessed. You just don't know it yet, but you're already blessed. You don't, you don't even know that all your bills are already paid. Healing is already done. You understand that when, when God begins to deal with us, he shows us two types. He, he says, there's a place that you've been in that is not fulfilled. For, for an example, let's go to John with Peter. Let's deal with Peter for a few minutes. Talking about your place right now. Your place is good. Look at you. It's good. And da, da, da. You said, preacher, how can, how can this place, this toe up from the flow up look good? I don't see nothing. And I want you to see it right now. I want you to believe. Now, I want you to go to the 21st chapter of St. John. And look how God takes you from a place of work, a place where you've been doing all you could do, but then he's going to call you into a place that's fulfilled. The 21st chapter. The Bible says in verse 5, Jesus said unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, no. Many Christians will try to get religious and act like they got it. They're trying to act like, I've arrived. I got all the answers. God says, no, you don't. And so I like them because they give Christ a sanctified no. No, I, I don't know it. Every, I don't know everything. I, I haven't got there yet, God. I'm still working on a little attitude adjustment right now. I got a little anger management going on inside of me. And so what God is doing, he's chipping away. Why? Because you got to become like him. If you're going to affect the world, if you're going to affect the community, if you're going to affect the job, they got to quit seeing you and see the glory that's on you. Hallelujah. How many know that um, the price of glory done went up? Uh, it's done went up. And so God said, if you're going to get more glory, there comes affliction. Because in between glory to glory, there's affliction. There are some things that's humbling you. The word affliction means to humble me. It, it makes me, praise God, look at myself in a real way. Peter said it like this. He says that um, after you suffer a while, now that word suffer a while means to fill it. After you fill it, then he establishes me, settles me. You know, after I suffer a while, and many people don't want to suffer in the place, but the place is good because the place can't do no more than what God has already sanctioned it for it to do. The place is in compliance to what God already spoke over that place, over that fish that Jonah had to go in. He told him only three days. God, I thank you. The fiery furnace, just enough so that, amen, they can get in and then get out. 
See, you're in a place right now that your flesh don't like it, but God is going to show you that, praise God, glory going to come out of it until your circumstance says you you still giving God praise, that you're still blessing God, you're still magnifying God. The thing didn't work out like you wanted to, but you're still saying to God be the glory. It didn't feel like I wanted to feel, but God is still getting glory. Why? Because I didn't shut down. I didn't let it get next to me. Because though he slay me, yet will I trust him. God, I thank you. Look at your neighbors. I'm still in this place. God, I don't understand all the dynamics of it. But God saw everything. And then he made some out of it. And so I have to acknowledge the fact, first of all, that must come an acknowledgement that, so, that I don't have it all yet. Then Jesus says something. He says unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. He said, your methods are wrong. If you're going to catch this type of fish, you got to, you got to change your method. Your style is wrong. You, you're giving the fish stuff that they don't want to eat. You wonder why they ain't putting a hook in their mouth because you ain't giving them nothing to come out the water. You ain't giving them nothing to want to change. They, they, they're tired of the same old bait. Huh? They're tired of formality and tradition. They, they want something that will make them run out the boat, run out the water. And you got to find, ask God, Lord, I don't know it. I don't know how to get them out. I don't know how to help my family. I don't know how to help crack man. I don't know how to help the people incarcerated. I need you to show me what I got to feed them so they'll get hungry enough to want to come out of what they're in. I'm in a place. And so... Huh. He says, on the right, and ye shall find. He tells them where it's going to be. On the right side. Look at you. On the right side. Not the left side. In the book of Job, it talks about the left hand. That's the hand that God works. The right side is the authority. The right side is the ability. Amen. The favor that God graces you to go into stuff that you can't go in yourself. He says, go ahead, because I've given you permission to get blessed. Hmm. God, I thank you. He says, and they cast, therefore, and now there were... Now, not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. When they followed the direction of God, I understood that God had said it's good. What you're looking at is good. And when you follow the direction, it's going to come out. You're going to get a press down, shaken together, running over blessing in the name of Jesus. The reason why a lot of people are frustrated is because they're not hearing the voice of God. And not only hearing the voice of God, they ain't trying to hear God. They want to hear their own selves. But until you get tired of being a wonder and want him to get the glory and say, God, use me in spite of myself. Because if, it, if God really pulled the cover, hallelujah, you couldn't even lead nobody to a refrigerator. God, I thank you. It's something that I didn't even see. He, he says that they caught the draw, and therefore that disciple whose name, um, who Jesus loved, said unto Peter, is it, the, it is the Lord. Now Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, and he girt his fisher coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. Now he was already in one place. What an abundance. But when he looked on the land and saw what Christ was walking in, the Bible says that where he was, it was already cooked. He said, come and dine. He was already in a place where it was already done. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to a place where it's already done. Huh. See, so you got to understand, where he wants you to get to, you ain't got to work it up. He, and notice he didn't tell you to lead the fish out there neither. He said, bring what you got because we're going to get double for your trouble. And, uh, God says, you got to move from a place where we've already said it's good. It's worked for the time that it needs to work for. Then it's done ran out. Now you have to make a decision whether you're going to stay in an obsolete place or move it to something that's moving now that has things that you can operate in this 21st century. And so you can't afford, amen, to stay, let your mind stay stuck because the enemy wants you to stay stuck, but God is trying to bless your entrepreneur self. He's trying to bless, amen, your education. 
educate itself. He's trying to bless you as an individual so that you can begin to move into something that's already done. See, what God is doing, it is so set up for you. All you got to do is get into this place and enjoy it for the glory of God. Now, many times we've been praying, saying, God, take away this, take away this. But if you read in Genesis, when he puts the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil in there, he does not tell them to pray for it to get out of the garden. No, he says that you got so much going on in your life that you can stand up against what's in the garden and not let it influence you, but you influence it. See, you saying, Lord, let the get the witches out of here, but you ought to say, bring them on, because if I got what it takes, I shouldn't be running, but they ought to understand that it's not by might nor by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, bring it on. God, I thank you. He says, now, you're going to get in a place where there's going to be stuff already in place. This is what God is trying to get, the body of Christ. He's not trying to take you away from nothing. He's trying to get something to you. Huh. And so every time God um, blesses us in a place, he always blesses the place before the people come. There's always a place before you get there. Because he knows, amen, that all you got to do is enjoy what he put in place. And so he said it's good. And so the enemy can't do nothing with it because he said it's good. And so everything that you're in right now, you have to look at it and say it's good because daddy said it's good. Huh, huh. The job I'm on is good. My business is good. And it may not be the profit right there, but you understand there's a divine turnaround coming. Huh, nah. The turnaround is coming. Go to Psalms 120, 124 and 1 right quick. Psalms 124 and 1. Hmm. The turnaround. Some of you are right at the point of turnarounds. The enemy tried to take you out, but he can't take you out because God already done spoke good over you. Oh, and every now and then, God is old taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. Blessed be he that trusted in the Lord. Listen to what the Bible said. Um, it said, if it, if it had not been the Lord, who was on our side. Now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was, on our, who was on our side, when men rose up against us. Check it out. He says it twice. Anytime God speaks twice, one is for heaven, one is for earth. Lazarus, Lazarus. Didn't he come out? Did he come on out? Abraham, Abraham. Then he, he come getting a blessing. Jesus speaks, verily, verily, I say unto you, he has the authority in heaven as well as in earth. Whatever I bind in the earth, I can bind in heaven. Why? Because it's all good. And it's going to work for my good. Hallelujah. Then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The streams had uh, gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Because your situation want to eat you up. But God's not going to allow it to because he said it's good. And that you're about to come forth as pure gold in the name of Jesus. He tells us, praise God, and in my place, everything is working like it's supposed to. So why would I walk away from a blessed place? It's blessed, but you don't see it, but it's a blessed place. Because God has already spoke over the thing where your enemies can't do nothing about it. And so God says, amen, they can say whatever they want to. This place is blessed. Many people have left because they didn't understand the place was blessed. God, I thank you. They didn't understand that even your household, and God is so, he is so, so adamant about your place being blessed that he says that even though you may not be here, but the place is in you. Let's go uh, to our second scripture over in, in Genesis, the 50th chapter about Joseph now. Many of us are familiar with his story, how God set it up, because God had directed his life. All that was connecting like it's supposed to be. Oh, God. Part of us, why it's supposed to be what she's supposed to be? All good. All that was good. In the prison, it's good to be here. When was the last time you praised God for the place that you were in and it didn't look good, but you just said, it's all good. 
This place is making me look good because it could kill me, but it can't. I'm not about to It's feeding me. I mean, I mean, the blessing of the Lord are about to overtake you. That God's about to prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. And so, and so before you quit, you understand that this is the place that God wants you to be in. Look at your name. I supposed to be here. Huh? And, and see, the enemy is hoping that you can't praise God in this place. But you got to understand that you're made out of the right DNA and that you can bless God anywhere. And so what these trials do, they are, they are what I call calisthenics for your soul. They help you praise God. Every lie make you say, thank you, Jesus. Every rumor make you jump up and give God praise. Every insurrection says, I thank you, I like it, because it makes me pray. Because, see, God don't want you to get comfortable in the world because the world ain't your home. He don't want you to be attracted by this place, but he wants you to be attracted by him. You know that why the enemy is attracted to a lot of people is because of fear. And so when I start speaking fear and stuff, the enemy says, I like how you talk. And he come in and camp out with you because instead of you walking in faith, you walk in fear. And so he come, amen, and feed off of your fears because you don't believe your bills going to get paid or the thing ain't going to work like it need to. But you got to understand, look at your name, Said the righteous is not in trouble. He said, I was young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen the right to forsaken nor seed begging bread. People call it recession, but they call it a season of recession, but I call it a season of receiving. Look at your names. I'm about to get a stimulus check up in here. I don't know that God's getting ready to give you some stuff. He's already done put it through the pipe. Because what you see in the natural is going down in the spiritual. Because, see, they already done passed the stimulant bill. God said in the spirit, I done passed the bill for you. And you ought to get ready to get paid. Some stuff get ready to work out for your good. So why would you sit around and be depressed when God got blessings backed up on for you? Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. And so all the stuff that leads up to Joseph's lifestyle, because he knows he's going to be the head. He knows he's going to be running things. He moves from the place to the people now. People. He says in the word of God, and Joseph said un unto them, fear not. He, he says, For am I not in the place of God? Am I not in my place? I'm in my zone. I'm flowing now. See, his daddy had died. He was 147 years old. Jacob was, had died. In the minds of their brothers, they were thinking, that since dad is dead, Joseph are going to get even. They were thinking about how we put him in the pit, how he was in prison for 17 years. This is how they were thinking. Oh, God, I say. And, 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 and just knowing that Joseph was going to put it on him. But Joseph said, y'all making me look good. See, all that time I was... In process, he was kill, he was chipping away. So what you looking at is a, a replica of daddy. <laughs> you, you're looking at what y'all were fighting all the while. <laughs> well, l listen what the word said. The Bible said, but as for you, you thought, see, your thinking is jacked up. Because you ain't thinking right. You thinking, praise God, because I'm in it and because you, you did what you did. But really, you helped me. I appreciate you. What you need to do is send emails to all your player haters. To everybody that lied on you. Everybody that said you weren't going to get the house. Everybody that said you won't get the job. Everybody that said you weren't going to come out. You need to go ahead and email them right now and say, listen here, I appreciate you. Because what you did, you helped my prayer life. What you really did, you got me more consecrated now. Hallelujah. More, got me dedicated in the name of Jesus. And see, people that got a loud mouth and talk a lot, you know you're going to be held accountable. You up here prophesying, saying everything. You know you're going to, it, it got to come at you. Oh, God, I think, I was thinking, amen, right before Christmas, amen, I, I had told, told the saints, I said, the Lord, give me bless me with another vehicle. I just spoke it out in there, preacher. I spoke it out there. I just spoke it right on out there. And December the 23rd, got it. Right? Got it. I said, yeah, look at here. And then I told him, this is what I told him at the, car, the dealership. I said, I don't want no $300 payments. I said, I have what I say. I said, I want no 300 I said, you can work this. He said, let me go in the back and see what I can do. He go back in the back. He come back. He said, he said, Mr. Vero, what you think about that? I said, 100 and $64.98. He 
He said, you like that payment? I said, put it in ink. Let's go and process that. That cup, da da ba Because the blessings of the Lord added no sorrow. And you got to understand, before I got there, there was some stuff trying to hit my life to the point that I was trying to get weary. But God kept telling me, I saw, I made, and I told you it was good. God, I thank you. Look at your name and say, God saw it, and God made something out of it, and then he said it was good. And see, you sweating over stuff that God already done spoke over. God, I thank you. And I was just praising the Lord, just thanking the Lord. And somebody say two months later. Two months later. Last week, in a head-on collision. Tarabasa. Head on collision. The guy went uh, airborne, hydroplane, came at me like a kamikaze and tore my stuff up. But you know what? I walked up out of there and said, you making me look good. I cut out of my shot. I cut out of my sail. I said, I can get some old cars, but devil, you can't kill me before my time because I got work to do. Look at your name. He's trying to take you out. But he can't take you out because there's work to do. God has already spoke over your life. The hospital can't keep you. The sickness can't keep you. Whatever is trying to hold you, it's got to loose you up in here. Hey, God, I thank you. Joseph said, I just want to thank y'all. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for what you done done. You, you, you did me a favor. But God meant it. Notice who he puts ownership on. God. God meant it for good. God says, this is how it's supposed to win anyway. You're on schedule. Look at that. You're on schedule right now. You're crying because you're walking a little lack, right? But you're on schedule. What it's really doing is keeping you humble. Because if God would give you a million tomorrow, your head will get too big. But God said, what I'm doing, I'm going to give it to you in process. He said, when you start looking like me, talking like me, decreeing like me, then I can go ahead and let you walk in this way to glory. But you understand that the suffering at this present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. So, so, so he, he says, it's good because the place he put me in. And then he says, you're good because of the people that you associate with. Because God is shifting your associations now. The associations that you've been with, they don't want nothing. God is pulling you, becoming uncomfortable. Uh, you're becoming restless uh, because you're king. Kings don't just hang out with anybody. Look at you, I got some kingship up in me. That's why there's stuff in you that reject certain things because you're walking in kingship. You're walking like a head and not the tail. You have to rebuke some stuff because they don't fit you. And see, somebody trying to make you accommodate and settle. But look at somebody, I can't settle. Uh, no, 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 no. And so what God do, God speak over stuff that's given to bless you. And sometimes it don't even look like a blessing. He'll shroud your pain with a promise. And many times, it don't even look like a blessing. So what you do, you walk away from it because that didn't look like it's supposed to look like. But God said, ain't about looking like nothing here. It's about believing what I just told you. And so, so God said, I'm going to honor your word. And so when he began to honor your word and you begin to decrease some things, that's why you got to be real careful as mouth-believing unbelievers. Because whatever you say, God begins to honor it. Look at your neighbor. If you say God will honor it. You're a believer. You stand on the word of God. God going to turn it around. God, I thank you. Look at somebody. It's about to turn around. Oh, God, I thank you. See, somebody was trying to play with my money, brother. Let me, let me break it down to you. Somebody was trying to mess with my money. I said, hold up. Wait, what is up with this? I said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And they tried to, tried to shortchange me. And I had a partner with me. And he was blowing a fuse. He was acting out of his flesh. And if I won't careful, I'm about to act out of mine. But I, I understood God said, it's making you look good. And so he said, go ahead and decree that it's given to come to you retroactive. And I said, look at here. 
I said, I have what I say. It's given me to come my way. And I was minding my business. Look at your mind and your business. How many know the blessing of the Lord will overtake you? Minding your business. Doing with God. Because every day he's chiseling away at you so that you can become just like him. See, when you start trying to stop the productivity and the production, God said, I got a problem. Because he said, you know I ain't through with you yet. See, many times, amen, we get a few blessings, then we get cute. But God said, I ain't through with you yet. You think this is something. Wait till I get through with the big picture. And every now and then, God, will, he'll, he'll just let you get a preview of where you're going. You ain't even there yet. And people ain't mad. It's like, it's like with Moses, when God showed Moses and said, Moses, look at that burning bush. He looks at the bush, but it don't burn up. He looks at it, and he keep looking at his ministry, and it don't burn up. He keep looking at his, man his marriage, but it don't burn up. He keep looking at his situation, but it don't don't burn up. There's something that ain't going to be consumed. God is showing you that your stuff ain't going to die. I shut that out of the seal. It's eternal to God. And anytime God show you something, he has exposed you to a world that's bigger than you. And the enemy don't want you to be exposed. But look at you. I'm getting ready to get exposed. Glory to God. Your day of lack is about over. Your day of struggling is about over. There's coming divine turnaround. Look at your divine turnaround. God is giving to do about face on you and say, praise God, your circumstance is giving to really make you look good. I remember, I remember when, whenever our kids were small and we would go through crisis, man of God, we would go through crisis, kids were small, and, and we had particular needs. And so instead of a man canvassing over the house of spirit of doubt and frustration, I said, listen, here, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Because, see, I picked this spirit up from my mama. I'm going to tell you, this is what my mama used to do. We ain't had nothing to eat. And I said, mama, when are we going to the grocery store? She said, we ain't. The grocery coming to us. I said, what? I said, I don't understand you. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how is groceries coming to us when we need groceries. And the grocery store is down the street. She said, listen here, son. We're going to come in agreement. Believe God. And God going to work some stuff out. See, I, I didn't have enough sense to know she didn't have no money. She won't tell me, ain't got no money, son. I got faith, though. <laughs> I got favor. And so she's in there talking about, Lord, I thank you. I bless you for the grocery. I give you praise for what's coming. God, you said I, it's mine. The cattle belong to you. I'm just listening to her. And all of a sudden, here, God, I thank you. People are bringing stuff up. I'm saying, who you? Don't, don't worry about the who. Worry about the provider, the one that's behind the who. Don't worry about the, 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 the mass man. Worry about the one that brought the one to the place. See, you get caught up, praise God, in the music, but you ought to get caught up in the composer of the music. You're looking at the fabric, but you need to ask the seamstress, how did you do that? <laughs> but you're making me look good. And see, what God is doing, he's fitting you up so you can look good. And so when people start looking at my child, how in the world did you come out like that? But you ought to look him in the face and say, he's making me look good. He got me like this. I can't take no credit. <laughs> and so I began to just um, embrace that when Mama walked in. And so one day, I was going through almost the same similar challenge. I was at church, and I had sold my seed, believing God, praising God. But, but, but see, I still had a little me in there. And see, y'all acting like you ain't got no me in you. God said, I got to put this, this, this chisel on him because he's still trying to walk in him. And so what I was doing in the church, I, was, I, was, I had given, but I put on my religious face and was looking around the church who were going to be the blesser. <laughs> You're going to bless me. You know how we look when we get spiritual, we want somebody to bless us. We want to draw attention to the flesh. <laughs> and that wasn't working. Whole service went on. Nothing happened. Going to my car. 
I said, Lord, I still thank you. <laughs> You're still good. I give you honor and praise. And all of a sudden, I heard somebody in the backdrop talking about uh, Dick and Farrell. I said, there it is. <laughs> 